Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fairy Talk. My name is Nick. I had a busy past week or two, I'll tell you that much. So I'm going to get right into the nitty gritty. I don't have a whole whole lot for you today, but what I do have I think is kind of interesting. Um, I'm, at the very end of the video, I'm going to show you this week's project, which I've never done before because I'm pretty excited about it. But let me first start off with last week's project. Uh, the Tooth Fairy box, a, a little box that you can put uh, your, your son or daughter's uh, lost tooth in so they can leave it under their pillow for the Tooth Fairy. This was a, a rather impromptu project. Uh, my son had lost his tooth and my wife came to me and said, hey listen, can you build a little, eh, a little keepsake, little tooth box basically, something for him to put it in and um, you know, so that it can be put under his pillow and uh, you know, Tooth Fairy can come leave her money. And I think I had oh, three hours into making it. Now that seems like a lot because that I was taping. I think I think if you were to really just get down to the nitty gritty and make it, and you and you didn't make a video, um, I'd say an hour, maybe forty five minutes even. And that kind of brings up my next point. I had people ask you know, what what type of wood it was, and it, it was walnut. And let's see here. I think it goes like that. Interesting, I had this chunk, this off cut of walnut laying around. I had a eight quarter, eight foot long uh, board of walnut that I uh, had from my sawmill that I got when uh, I bought all the maple for my kids' bedroom furniture a couple years ago. And it was just sitting around and people are, you know, people constantly say, listen, ah, oh, I can't get walnut, I can't get cherry, I can't get maple, or they don't know where to get it. Check your local cabinet builders or um, there, there, there's plenty of places to where they have these smaller off cuts. This one had a big check running down it. That's why I cut it off in the first place is so that that check didn't run into whatever I was making at the time. And But I mean it's walnut. It's a nice looking wood so I kept it and it's perfect for a project like this. And I mean really quite perfect. You don't have to have thousands of board feet to make a neat little project. And so I guess that's my takeaway, but going back to this, uh, this box, well, like I said, 45 minutes to an hour, maybe. You don't even need to get as elaborate. I put this little ball bearing catch for the lid in there. That's kind of one of those things to where, I've been doing that type of ball detent system on a couple projects, but I haven't done it in a few years. So I figured I would share it with you guys, and, and that was pretty well received. And then just a little brass screw. Oh, another comment I commonly got was, the size, yeah, it was an impromptu project. My wife came to me and said, you know, we need this for tonight. What can you do? And so I drilled the hole with the Forstner bit, just, I had it in my head, for the tooth to go in. But then the tooth fairy leaves money, so it probably would be smarter. Now, granted, you can fold up a dollar bill in here, but I think even folding up two dollar bills would be, would be kind of tight in there. If I were to redo this, I would uh, definitely make that the size of a quarter, in fact, I could probably just unscrew the lid. Yeah, maybe. I could just unscrew the lid and make a bigger hole to fit maybe four to eight quarters, depending on how um, generous your tooth fairy is. But yeah, that was a, that was a good point. That's, um, and I left it unfinished. Not because of uh, lack of time, but because I just I thought it had um, a, different, uh, a different feel to the project. Because what we had ended up doing was uh, writing out a little letter from the Tooth Fairy, and we put that letter and this box together, and we put it in our mailbox, and we told our son that, you know, you must have had a package. For whatever reason, kids at a young age, they like getting mail, and as you get to be an adult, you realize it's just bills and junk mail, so. But he thought that was super neat, so he, he still thinks that it was from the Tooth Fairy, which is kind of cool. He was super excited about it. But going back to... The um, it took me about three hours. I was talking with a couple other YouTubers the other day, and man, it it it, it varies widely. And I don't want to discourage anybody from just um, grabbing their their you know their smartphone and taping something that they're making woodworking, and just going to town and making a short video. I don't want to discourage that, and that's definitely doable. There's a few of my videos to where. Um, my camera's either being borrowed or I didn't have it with me and there's, you know, stuff from my phone, video from it. But setting up, you know, not only trying to come up with an idea every week, but setting up, you know, lighting if you want to do type of lighting because with a lot of these DSLRs, lighting is key. It, and 
people think, well, it, it looks well lit or, you know, there's a grain that when you don't light the scene well enough, there's a grain that's introduced and it's kind of a, a noisy thing that's picked up and that's just kind of how DSLRs work. But after that and rendering and upload and edit and things of that nature, um, it, it, it amounts to a lot, a lot of time um, invested in making each and every video. Like I said, I think I had a total of three hours, like total, so this was a really fun project for me to make. And I debated even taping it, and then I thought, you know, I think some people might want to see that little ball bearing that I put in there. And uh, so that, yeah, that went over pretty well. But moving along to my next point, I was um, talking with a couple other uh, like workshop type people uh, in and around my, my town, and there, we got on the topic of um, a nice pair of shears or scissors to have out in your workshop. And they were talking about whether they're cutting leather or plastic or, you know, what have you. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. This is my Cutco scissors. And these are very interesting. They're, they're, they're more for the kitchen, but I keep them out in my shop. I was um, trying to show some people the other day that... It can actually cut a penny. These things are so strong and they're designed so well that they can cut some materials that are just, I mean, you can actually just shear off the rim of a penny, which is very, very, um, I shouldn't say very, very hard. I mean, it's not you know diamond or anything, but I challenge you guys, I mean, if you're willing to, to wreck the current scissors you have, to try and cut uh, any type of coinage or a penny. I mean, I've cut, you know, dimes and quarters and, different things but penny seems to work easiest and it illustrates the point the best neat thing about these is like i said they're designed for kitchen shears the pivot mechanism actually just you know you open it to its fullest extent and then you can separate the pieces and i guess their theory behind that is in that actual hinge mechanism you can clean everything all in between there and you know i don't know these are just the best scissors. I, will, I will leave a link in the description below as far as where you can get some of these they are pricey and i mean pricey i think they're currently like 130 dollars but i was fortunate enough one of my good friends who has these and i was he showed me and i was like man those are cool he got me a, a, a set for my wedding so that was really nice of him interesting story about them i was doing some landscaping um, uh, three, four years ago at my house and, you know, you lay down this black landscaping fabric and I was out there with my, my scissors cutting the landscaping fabric and I kind of got lost or, you know, wh whatever I was doing, I, unbeknownst to me, I left the scissors under the landscaping fabric, finished up all the landscaping and for a year to a year and a half, I'm like, where are these scissors? I looked everywhere and luckily, one of our plants in front of our house had died, and my wife had bought a new plant. And she said, can you dig up the old roots of the you know, plant and, and put the new ones in? And we found the scissors. It was underneath. So for, for a winter with, you know, four feet of snow, I mean, I mean, I don't know how much snow we had that year, but rain and the cold, and they didn't rust. They didn't, you know, I, I don't know. I just thought they were really, really neat scissors. So... And that brings up another point to a, you know, manual dexterity or just dexterity in general. I was often reminded that when trying to teach people, um, volunteers or whomever, uh, with theater groups or diff, you know, people that came over to my shop saying, "Hey, I want to build my wife this project. Can you help me?" And I'm sure there's tests out there for dexterity, manual dexterity, things of that nature. But I always had to remind myself when teaching people that. You know, you might look at somebody and they grab a drill and they try to screw in a screw and it's just, it's not working out for them. And, and it would sometimes frustrate me because, you know, you, you immediately jump to lack of knowledge or lack of experience, but maybe they don't have a whole lot of dexterity. I, I just, from a very young age, always knew that, like, I was just, you know, always kind of, I don't know, messing with stuff with my fingers. And uh, if you guys know any manual dexterity or dexterity um, tests... I'm sure I could Google it, but I'm sure you guys have some pretty decent answers, too. I wonder if there's any type of uh, hold fast rule to if you can put square block into square hole, and I don't know. I have no idea. So 
the last thing I want to show you, and I am super, super excited about this. In fact, I totally wasn't ready. Well, let me, yeah, hold on one second. I wanted to actually grab this. And I'll show this in the video, and I'm giving away too much already. But I had two uh, table saw insert plates. Like pretty hefty metal. I mean, they're not super thick. They're almost a full quarter. I mean, they're a, definitely a full heavy eighth, but I would say just a shy under a quarter. And I had these for a table saw that I no longer have. And I was cleaning the shop, and I'm like, hmm, throw them away, or what, what, what should I do with them? They're, they're pretty much useless to me. And then it had dawned on me that a friend of mine was getting married, and he was saying that he started collecting knives. So, I'll just, this is going to be a, somewhat of a quick peek. So, I made this Bowie knife, or Bowie knife, I don't know, however you want to pronounce it, out of a table saw insert. And it was actually, this is the dado stack insert. I had the regular one. And I will show that in the video. That is, up, that is upcoming this Friday. I'm super excited on how that turned out. A lot of neat little tricks and tips in that video. How I made the handle how I cut the metal, how I polished the metal, things of that nature. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away. It turned, it turned out it exceeded my expectations. So look forward to that this Friday if I, you know, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So that is all I have for you guys for this week. I appreciate you guys watching. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe. Uh, I put out build videos just about every Friday, and then these talkie talkies or vlog videos every Wednesday, and there's just a, you know, I'm, I'm starting to amass a decent amount of videos, so if you're new here, definitely check out some of the other videos, and if you're not new here, thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.